Dear students, I welcome you to this class of BA English first year of Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Hyderabad. Today, I shall talk about Sadat Hasan Manto's short story, The Dog of Tetwa. In this, we shall discuss about the important aspects such as plot, characters, themes, symbols, style, and technique of the short story. The Dog of Tetwal. Before talking about the short story, let me give you a brief introduction of the author Sadat Hasan Manto. Sadat Hasan Manto is a famous Indo-Pakistani Urdu short story writer and a playwright of the 20th century. Manto was born on 11th May 1912 at Samarala in undivided Punjab. He was educated in Amritsar and Aligarh. Manto lived in Amritsar, Delhi, Bombay and Lahore. While living in Bombay, he wrote the screenplays for movies. Manto migrated from India to Pakistan after the partition in January 1948. He moved from Bombay to Lahore where his family was settled. Manto died on 18th January in 1955 at the age of 43. He has to his credit 22 short story collections one novel, five series of radio plays, three collections of essays, and two collections of personal sketches. In addition to this, Manto wrote film scripts. The prominent films are Eight Days, Chal Chal Re Naujawan, and Mirza Ghalib. Manto also was known for his profiles of Indo-Pakistani film and music personalities. He wrote in many genres, but is best known for his short stories. Short stories of Manto are read with love and respect in India, Pakistan and the other parts of the world. Manto in his short stories presents and depicts the problems of this materialistic world. As literature is a mirror of life, the short stories of Manto are a reflection of life in which we can see an umpteen facets of Indian life. Manto highlights three important issues in his short stories. The first one is the problems of the downtrodden or the lower classes. The second is the ill treatment of women by the male in a patriarchal society. The third and the last one is the sufferings of the people after the partition of India. The short story that I am going to talk about is The Dog of Tetwa. It has been taken from Manto's short story collection Kingdom's Yen and other stories published in 1987. This short story takes place after the partition of India into Muslim Pakistan and secular India dominated by the Hindus. Immediately after the partition in 1948, India and Pakistan went for war over territorial boundaries. Primarily, the war was for the sake of Kashmir and both wanted to exhibit their power over Kashmir. This was the inspiration for Manto to write this short story. The story is set in the beautiful mountains of Tetwal during temperate and pleasant days in late September 1948. There is peace in the mountains, but instead of escaping to the innocence of nature, the Indian and Pakistani soldiers bring war with them. The men cannot enjoy the pleasant surroundings because they are not there to enjoy life. 
For the sake of your convenience and understanding, I have divided this short story into four sections. In the first section of the story, we can find conflict and tension between the two sides, that is India and Pakistan, who are trying to protect and defend the two mountain peaks in the border. Manto writes, the two sides had not budged from the positions for several days now. Occasional bursts of firing, about 10 or 12 rounds in a day were to be heard, but never the sound of human shrieks. In the very first section, as against the tension between the two sides, Manto, like the Romantics, William Wordsworth and Keats, presents a beautiful tranquility, peace and poetic harmony in nature. I quote, oblivious to the battle of the peaks and slopes, nature was immersed in its necessary work. The birds chirped as before, the flowers continued to bloom and lazy honey-bearing bees sleepily sipped nectar in the old time-honored way. In the first section, the author satirically presents the brutal fact that the tranquility of nature fails to bring peace into the world of humans and the struggle for power disrupts the nature. The second section introduces the Indian camp. Jamdar Harnam Singh is on night watch. At 2 o'clock in the morning, he wakes up Ganda Singh to take over the watch. He lies down to sing a romantic song about a pair of shoes with stars on them. Banta Singh also sings a song about love and tragedy. The soldiers feel sadness creeping over them. Maybe they are reminded that life should be about love rather than about war. The barking of a dog interrupts this meditative scene. Banta Singh finds the dog in the bushes and announces that his name is Chapad Junjun. The soldiers are in a happy mood when they see the dog. Again, sadness creeps over them when Harnam Singh says that the dog cannot eat if it is a Pakistani dog. The other soldiers assume that he is joking. But then Harnam Singh reiterates that all Pakistanis will be shot, even Pakistani dogs. A soldier responds by leading the men in a declaration of India Zindabad. The dog recognizes something in his tone and reacts with fear, which seems to please Harnam Singh. Banta Singh makes a sign with the dog's name on the cardboard and hacks it around the dog's neck. Singh declares Junjun as an Indian dog. In this section, we can find a conversation among the soldiers about love, but their hearts are filled with venom and hate towards their neighbors. The third section of the story introduces the Pakistani camp. The next day, the same dog appears in the Pakistani camp. We come to know that the dog had spent a few days with the Pakistani soldiers before it went to the Indian camp. Like the Indian soldiers, the Pakistani soldiers are tired of the war that has been dragging on for months. Subedar Himmat Khan seems to show his bravery by twirling his moustache while studying a map of Tetwal sector of India. Meanwhile, Bashir begins to sing a song about where a lover had spent the night. When the dog appears, Subedar Himmat Khan turns the lines of the song into an accusation against Junjun. Where did you spend the night? He screams. Bashir takes this as a joke and sings his song to the dog. But Subedar Himmat Khan throws a pebble at Junjun. Bashir discovers the sign around the dog's neck. The soldiers contemplate the sign to see if it could be in code. Subedar Himmat Khan reports the incident to his platoon commander. The commander 
gives a deaf ear to the report as he finds it meaningless. The soldiers are bored and seem to feel that their presence here is meaningless. The Pakistani soldiers rename Junjun and put a sign around his neck saying that he is Shunshun, a Pakistani dog. Subedar Himmat Khan then sends Junjun back to his family, urging him to take the message to the enemy. The dog trots off and Subedar Himmat Khan fires in the air. Feeling bored, he decides to fire at the Indians. For half an hour, the two sides exchange fire after which Subedar Himmat Khan orders a halt. As he combs his hair, he wonders where the dog has gone. In this and the earlier sections, we can find the similarity between the Indian and Pakistani soldiers. Both sides sing romantic songs and participate in humorous conversations. But the thought of religion, culture, community and nation triggers and brings a barrier between the two sides. In the fourth section, Junjun goes around the hill to the Pakistani camp. This enrages Subedar Himmat Khan. He shoots at the dog, hitting some stones. Junjun continues to run toward him and Subedar Himmat Khan continues to shoot at the dog. Meanwhile, Harnam Singh fires. The two opposing soldiers enjoy scaring the terrified dog until Harnam Singh wounds the dog. Still, Subedar Himmat Khan will not let Junjun return to the Pakistani camp. Khan tells the dog that it is his duty to continue going toward the enemy camp. It is clear that in Subedar Himmat Khan's mind, fanaticism has overcome any rationality. When the wounded dog drags himself toward Harnam Singh, Jamdar Harnam Singh shoots and kills him. While the Pakistani Subedar Himmat Khan compares the killing to martyrdom, Harnam Singh says that Junjun died a dog's death. In this section, the dog runs from one camp towards the other to save his life. The readers show sympathy and compassion on the dog. Through the death of the dog, Manto seems to bring out the naked fact that man-made divisions cause strife, conflict and turmoil and lead to the destruction of the society. The ultimate irony is that the same soldiers who cuddled and gave identity to the dog kill him in the name of religion and nationality. Now let me tell you briefly about the important characters of the story. Bashir. Bashir is a soldier in the Pakistani camp. Bashir sings a romantic song about love. He is the soldier who reads and recognizes the sign around Junjun's neck. He is the one who gives Pakistani identity to the dog and names him Sapar Sunsun. He shows both love and anger on the dog. The second character is the dog. The dog Junjun plays a central role in the story. He is trusting and very friendly. Unable to grasp the hatred between the Pakistani and Indian soldiers, Junjun greets both with equal enthusiasm. Junjun perhaps demonstrates more wisdom than the men. The dog treats them not as Indian and Pakistani, but as humans. But men expect the dog to choose sides. In his innocence, Junjun represents the refugees and the other victims of the partition of India. His death is a reflection of their deaths. Even though his death is in reality senseless, the soldiers treat it as if it belongs to a cause. Subedar Himmat Khan of the Pakistani army says that Junjun has been martyred because he was killed by a member of the Indian army. The next character is Subedar Himmat Khan. He is a member of the Pakistani camp. He has a large moustache that he twills, perhaps demonstrating his vanity. With his fixation on what is Pakistani and what is Indian, 
Subedar Himmat Khan represents unreasoning divisiveness and hatred. He sends Junjun into the enemy camp, refusing to let him come back by firing at the dog. Subedar Himmat Khan means to scare him. He thinks that Junjun's terror is amusing and does not allow him to return even when the dog is injured. Subedar Himmat Khan demonstrates the disregard for life that comes with blindly following a cause. Now, let me tell you about another character, Banta Singh. Banta Singh is the youngest of the Indian soldiers. He has a sweet voice. He sings a lawlorn verse that inspires sadness in the others. Banta Singh is also the soldier who finds Junjun in the bushes and gives him a name. He does not see the dog as an enemy, nor does he wish to make the dog take sides. He sees the dog as a poor refugee. He represents a viewpoint that is more rational than that of his fellow soldier, Jamdar Harnam Singh, who wants to make the dog a point of contention between the two armies. Now, let me talk about another character, Ganda Singh. He is a member of the Indian camp. Ganda Singh is the first to be awakened by Jamdar Harnam Singh, who is on the night watch. He, along with the other soldiers, is affected by the melancholy words of Jamdar Harnam Singh. Jamdar Harnam Singh. He is a member of the Indian army. Jamdar Harnam Singh is the first character introduced in the story. He is on night watch and wakes the others. As he lies down, he sings a sentimental song. In some ways, he serves as a counterpoint to Bashir, the soldier in the Pakistani army who also sings a song. Jamdar Harnam Singh seems to lack compassion. He is the one who for sport shoots and injures Junjun. He is also the one who kills Junjun and then says that Junjun has died a dog's death. Like Subedar Himmat Khan, he also seems to be fundamental and fanatic about his identity. Now, let me tell you about the important theme of this short story. Human versus nature. The mountains of Tetwal are calm and cheerful, but the soldiers are determined to kill. While it would be natural for them to adapt to their peaceful surroundings, the soldiers remain combative. Though there is nothing to gain from exchanging fire, the opposing sides let off ritual shots daily. Unable to destroy each other, the soldiers destroy a harmless dog that is an element of nature. Because he is the only victim available, Junjun becomes a casualty of the soldiers' need to satisfy their bloodlust. Humankind's brutality is visited upon nature. It is not enough merely to scare the dog and make him run in terror. They need to destroy him. Though Subedar Himmat Khan first wounds Junjun, to him the dog's death proves that the Indian forces are killers. Jamdar Harnam Singh, who shot kills the dog, seems even so to blame the Pakistani forces. The two sides do not recognize that both have acted cruelly and absurdly. There is no regret for the killing, as there might be in peacetime, because it is seen as an act of war. The difference between nature and humankind is underscored by the fact that the seasons are changing as the story takes place. The change is occurring gently. The days and nights are mild. While some literature depicts the seasons in conflict, Manto's story shows that in nature, even opposites such as summer and winter flow peacefully into each other. It seemed as if summer and winter had made their peace, Manto says. The men, on the other hand, 
although they are very much alike, cannot accept each other. Now, let me tell you about the most important symbols in this short story. Darkness and light. Manto uses images of darkness and light to demonstrate the difference between the men and the natural world around them. Darkness represents the men, blindness while it is negative and light represents nature, sight and what is positive. During the night, the soldiers light a huge fire in an attempt to ward off darkness, yet they are able to overcome neither the darkness of night nor their own blindness. The biggest fires they can build can only illuminate a small patch of ground and do not enable them to see their enemies or to see within themselves. Manto writes, the morning broke as if someone had switched on a light in a dark room, it spread across the hills and the valleys. Nature is capable of producing an all illuminating brightness that the men do not have. The next symbol is the dog. The dog is the symbol of all the refugees for whom the identity had become confused overnight and who had been shunted from one side to the other not being able to find place they could call their own. Dog is also a symbol of all the innocent victims of violence who suffered the price of cruel acts of others. In many cultures, including the modern western one, the dog is not only a beloved companion but also a symbol of loyalty, protection and nobility. Manto uses a historical and journalistic style to convey the facts. Brutal honesty is one of the most important techniques that is applied in this short story. He uses the third person narrative technique or omniscient technique to tell the story. Satire, irony, humor and allegory are the literary techniques and tools through which Manto reaches his readers. Dear students, today we have explored the life and works of Sadat Hasan Manto, setting, plot and characters of Manto's short story, The Dog of Tetwal, style, technique, themes and symbols in the short story, The Dog of Tetwal. I hope this discussion will help you in understanding the short story, The Dog of Tetwal. You can read more about this topic from the books you are watching on your screen. Stars from Another Sky, The Bombay Film World in 1940s, Kingdom, Send and Other Stories, published in 1987. Balla Alok, Life and Works of Sadat Hasan Manto, Indian Institute of Advanced Study, 1997. If you have any doubts and questions, you can contact us on the following address. We will meet in the next class with another topic. Until then, take care. Bye. Have a nice day.